Hey guys, my name is Zekner, and most of you know me from TikTok as being your historian, military, not expert, but military and analyst, as well as what happens in the stage of geopolitics. So without further ado, in this video, we're going to get into what is going on on the 16th of October on the battlefield in Ukraine. So let's get started. Right now, I want to look at something. So we're going to back out all the way to the beginning of October. Makes sense. As to this point, since September, the Ukrainians have been doing very well to hold on and continue to push and create more counter offensives. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. And let's analyze what the battlefield looks like according to Deep State Map, which is quite accurate. As of this point, since yesterday, they have been able to claim and reclaim a lot of territory again. This is where it gets interesting. In this region right here, Russia is now starting to do a pushback. And does this signify that the war machine effort of the Ukrainians is slowing down? Let's find out. We're going to look at this map. And by the way, all sources and maps I will send down in my description in the bio and as well as my telegram for you guys to check out as well. But as of right now, we've been seeing a lot of offensive movement from the Ukrainians, which is in a sense very great because that means that the Russians are on the back foot, but it's starting to slow down. And I'll show you what I mean. Right here, we have this the Oskar River and east of uh, the Oskar River in the Luhansk region, Ukrainians have been able to push up somewhere around 15 to 17 kilometers, but we haven't seen them do control which signifies that its large battalions are still happening in that area. A lot of artillery and a lot of casualties and loss of equipments. If, before we move on, I want to show you something else. Let's move down south right now. South we have fighting in Torsk. There's a large battling and as of last night, it was claimed by the Russians with uh, the sources included by Rybar which is a Russian analyst military blogger, that they have claimed that they have now taken control of Torsk, the city. I cannot, as an independent uh, analyst, I cannot tell you if that is true or if it's just temporary. But as of right now, it looks like that there's a lot of fighting going on in this area. We'll move on for there until we get further notice. This region is interesting, where just in Bilorivka, they are almost on the border of Lyschansk as well as Severodonetsk. If we look how far the Ukrainians are from these cities, they're nearly just 12 kilometers and 16 kilometers away, but there is a lot of fighting going on. Then we're going to move down. One second, let me fix this for you guys. Bilorivka seems to be contested on Twitter, War Mapper. Actually, let's go check it out. I want to see what the War Mapper has to say about Bilorivka. Yeah, they're basically just stating that there's a, that it is contested territory and that we'll see movement, hopefully within the next several days. This part is where I'm going to call this the turning point. And it's not for the good of Ukraine. Let me just show you what I mean. As of now, we have 30,000 tr Ukrainian troops stationed in this area. They are holding on to Bakhmut as much as possible, while the Russians keep attacking and keep trying to enter once in a while. What I can tell you positively is that it's still in control of the Russian, uh, sorry, of the Ukrainians in the past 24 hours, but that they're suffering hard casualties and a lot of artillery in this region. We'll get back to that in just one second but there's a lot of fighting being reported here. Going down, we're going to say that Saporizhia has about another 30,000 troops from the Ukrainian side, and they are fighting Wagner PMC, trying to make a pincer offensive around this river. But we haven't heard so much about it, so we will just spring over for that until we hear more significance. Now we get into the, into the Kyrgyzstan region. Something that we've heard since the 29th of the first counteroffensive that has successfully protruded to what happened in the second counteroffensive up north. 
as of right now, they're still struggling and trying to make offensive. The Ukrainians have been on the offensive foot the entire time, while the Russians have been trying to hold on as long as possible. There is around 60,000 Ukrainian troops stationed here, fighting off around an equal variance of the amounts of Russian veterans going on. And they are the best Russian veterans out of all of the regions that are stationed here to try to hold on to the Kyrgyzstan region because it's that close to Crimea. But here's the thing. This area shows that there's been fighting along the right here. But every advancement and push that they do, they lose a lot of resources, equipment, and as well as personnel, troops as well. And we haven't seen significant gains unless the Ukrainians can still withhold it. But if they cannot, they're going to lose a lot on these offensives while the Russians are on the defensive. Now we're going to do a zoom out. And in this zoom out, I want to state some things. First, looking at the Belgorod region. In Belgorod, we're seeing about 100,000 soldiers estimated from the newly mobilized troops that are soon to be ready are stationed here or gathering in this area, right north of Kharkiv, Ukraine. Ukraine has been doing quite well to, to do ammunition strikes, hitting with artillery, their, their depots, ammunition depots, their oil depots, their civilian infrastructure, like electrical infrastructure. And they've been doing that constantly for the sev past several days, but to try to slow down the Russian war machine. How long it will, and how successful it, will it be? We will find out. Then we come on to the Belarusian side of the border, north of Kiev, of the capital of Kiev, where we're seeing another gathering of 50,000 Russian troops along the border, with more coming in. As a matter of fact, I want to show you something. In this is stated that Belarus has welcomed a new train of our troops. Russian fighters as a part of regional grouping, let me lower the volume, has arrived in the territory of the neighboring country. We have come to help the brotherly people of the Republic of Belarus on the strengthening the borders. What they're showing is that there's a large volume of troops, new boots coming in, new personnel, and a lot of resources coming in for the Northern side. If that happens, that means that Ukraine is going to have to take their resources that is located in Mykolaiv and start to force them up north to protect Kyiv and this front, which ultimately means that they need to split the resources if the counteroffensive don't go well. This is a battle of attrition and time, and time seems to be on the favor of Russia at this point, that it slowly gets into winter, they will integrate better with winter, which means that they will be able to solidify their foothold in each region, which makes it a lot, a lot harder for Ukraine to reclaim their territories. The mobilization is ready in two weeks, by the end of October to the beginning of November. That's 300,000 new troops that Ukraine is going to have to worry about, regardless of how veteran they are. Ukraine doesn't have that much boots. I think it's a total of 260,000. But every offensive they do, they lose more equipment and more personnel. And I would like to say that if it continues this way, Russia will have the advantage. Russia will make more gains and they will continue to win. They have the, all the time. And if NATO does not send enough troops, actually, before we get to the troops part, if NATO does not send more equipment, or if Ukraine is not able to find a gain in one strategic area, then it's starting to slow down and might mean that NATO would need to put in some fresh boots, whether it comes from volunteers or be personally involved to help out Ukraine. And if that is the case, Ukraine will lose. We'll find out more in the updates, the war. And if that is the case, Ukraine will lose. We'll find out more in the updates. The war is still too early to tell anything. This is the rhythm of what I've been seeing for the past several weeks. So enjoy, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.